But it's good that you're here and uh, that we get to celebrate Mother's Day together. Uh, I'm so, so happy. How many, how many grandmothers do we have with us? If you're a grandmother, a bunch of them, a bunch of grandmothers. That's great. You heard the story, didn't you, about the, about the grandmother who had her, her uh, grandsons, two grandsons, come spend Christmas holidays with her? And the uh, first day they took them, and she took them and put them in, in the bedroom to go to bed and told them to say your prayers. And so she walked out of the room, and they did. They knelt down to say their prayers, and the youngest one just began to holler out, Lord God, I really need my weed. Lord, I need that hockey helmet. Lord, I need it. Lord, in that train set. And his brother said, what are you doing? God's not hard of hearing. He said, I know it, but Granny is. <laughs> You know how to get it, don't you, boy? They know how to work on granny. <laughs> Mothers love their children and their grandchildren. It's an unbelievable love. But I've learned something living with one, that <laughs> there's something that even goes beyond that. They'll always love them. But they want them to be happy. They want them to be successful. They want those children, those grandchildren, to live fulfilled lives. The scriptures reference that as victorious and overcoming kind of lives. And that's what a grandmother and a mother really, really do want for their children. So today what I'm going to be talking about is faith. And faith that will overcome any opposition that we face. Because mothers, if there's a key to what mothers and grandmothers do to help a child do that, it is to put into them, to transmit to them, to make sure this happens to them, that they receive a faith that will overcome opposition. Uh, faith, as we've been in our series on faith, we've learned that faith is more than simple belief in God. Everybody believes in God. The Bible even says that the demons believe in God and do what? And tremble. <laughs> so belief in God is not faith. What faith is, is believing that God is in your life, that, that you hear Him. That, that He directs your life, that ye, He will cause you to do risky things, to step out into faith and to go to places that you only dream about going and that He's always with you. So a mother is very, very, and a grandmother is very, very important in this happening in a life so that they can be proud of their child and their grandchildren. You know, they'll always love them, but it's sad to say that they're not always not proud of them. So what we want to talk about today is the faith that a mother and a grandmother puts into a child that helps them overcome any opposition. So let me start with this scripture. It's in the book of 2 Timothy. It's in, uh, it's in chapter 1 and verse 5. And here, let me set it up just a little bit. The Apostle Paul is talking to Timothy, who is a young pastor. And he's facing all kinds of oppositions. Here he says in 2 Timothy 1, 5, I have been reminded of your sincere faith. Now, obviously, this was something that was discussed, something that people were aware of. It was discussed and talked about. Someone rem reminded the apostle about Timothy's faith, which first lived, it was an alive faith, first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice. And now I'm persuaded, now lives, now is alive in, in you also. Timothy, a, a young pastor, is put in a city where he wasn't born. And he goes to this city, and there he pastors a church. And he faces all sorts of oppositions. Now, I know pastoring looks easy. It looks like we just work one day a week, you know. But, but it's not. You face all kinds of oppositions. And this is what, this is what young Timothy was facing. He was facing, he was facing critics. Um, some people were saying that he was too young. He wasn't capable of leading a church. He was, he was just too young. Uh, he was having apostasy in the church where this teaching was wrong and it was dividing and splitting the church. He had leadership that, that he had to correct and direct and, and, and keep on the, on, on the path. And all of this stuff obviously had a, a physical effect on him because the Bible talks about his stomach, that he had frequent stomach problems, probably ulcers from pastoring a church. I, uh, th it can happen. Not here, not here, but it could happen. Uh, Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, listen, if you're going to get through these oppositions and you're going to be successful, what you've got to learn how to do is pull on that faith that your mother had and that your grandmother had. 
Because if you'll pull on that faith, it will get you through, not only through oppositions, but you can become victorious in those oppositions in which you face. So what I want to talk about today, what I want to make sure that we get a handle on, is what is this faith, this sincere faith? What, what is this about? Well, a sincere faith is a bold faith. A sincere faith is an enduring faith, a, a faith that, that is so sincere with a relationship with God that you never give up, no matter what you, what you face. It's an in-your-face kind of faith. It's an unashamed faith. This is what the sincere faith is. How many of you had a mother or a grandmother who had that kind of faith? Yeah, I see, see? Well, here's what I'm wanting to tell you. You your grandmother goes to bat for you, and your mother goes to bat for you, and, and never take that faith for granted. She's on her knees constantly for you. In fact, that could be why you're in the kingdom of God. She is there, and, she's, and, and even if, if she's gone on to be with the Lord, she's got more power. <laughs> I tell the people this week, they better watch out now. That's what sincere faith is. And what I'm trying to tell you today is that faith that she had is now in you. you got to pull on it, just like Timothy, Paul told Timothy. you got to bring it up, but it's there. It's there because she was there. And it's in you. And it can cause you and help you through life. She's passed that on to you. It's a beautiful thing, is it not, to see a mother raise their child in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And, and not just in faith. Again, Faith is more than believing there is a God. It's a wonderful thing to, to, to see a mother raise her child in a way that, that the child can talk to God. And God talks back. It's a wonderful thing to, to, to see a mother raise a child in a way where the child understands that, uh, that they can walk in with God. And that if they will be faithful to God, God will reward them. And, and, so, and so it's a wonderful thing and it's a sad thing to see the opposite. It's a sad thing to see... Maybe where social services has to come in and get involved or where there's addictions or where there's all kinds of problems, maybe abuse. That's a sad thing. But you see, it's a wonderful thing when there's a sincere faith involved because you know the child's going to make it. You know the child's going to be okay if there is a sincere faith. And God constantly brings to us oppositions. He allows those things. God constantly is allowing you to face oppositions. Every chapter of your life has faced opposition. So with that thought, if God allows it, then oppositions can't be bad. Because you see what a sincere faith will do, if you understand it, is take an opposition and make it an opportunity. Every opposition can be made into an opportunity if there is a sincere faith. Now the opposition will defeat you, if there's not a sincere faith, if there's not a sustaining faith, if there's not an enduring faith, if there's not an in-your-face faith, you can be defeated. But with a sincere faith, you can make it. And it's Mother's Day, and, and I'm talking to moms, but I'm talking to everybody. We all need to understand this opposition thing. You see, God presents us with opportunities, but with every opportunity you ever face, there's going to be oppositions adversities, and adversaries. We see this in the scriptures. It's very simple in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. We read here, For a great door and effectual is open unto me. The Apostle Paul is saying here, I have got this amazing door of opportunity, this door of opportunity that's open to me. And it's, 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 it's going to be very effectual. It's going to affect my success. It's going to affect my families. It's going to affect so many people. This is an effective door. And he goes on and he says, and there are many <laughs> adversaries. The Apostle Paul was the most successful of all the apostles. He even compared himself to it and whatever they done, he says, I've done more. <laughs> Every time he would list something and they say, well, he done, well, but I've done more. And, and he was the most successful of all the apostles. But at the same time, he had the most adversities, most adversaries, and the most opposition. And what I'm wanting you to see and wanting us all to see is that any time that any of us try to go forward in life and to have a better area of life, experience more out of life, any time that any of us do that, it's not going to happen without opposition. Don't go into an opportunity, a door of opportunity, and think that you won't be opposed. 
you will be. You're going to face it. Now, here's the difference between those who make it and those who don't. You see, if it was easy to be successful, everybody would do it. The difference between a successful person and a non-successful person is that they understand there's going to be opposition. Faith makes it possible. Now, the enemy will not allow any of us to go to a higher level of life, to go higher in life without opposition. It just doesn't happen that way. You're going to face opposition. If you want your marriage to be fulfilling, you want a fulfilling marriage, don't think you're not going to face opposition. If you ever see a successful marriage, there has been a lot of opposition. Yeah, maybe you're, maybe you, um, you want to see your finances get better. You want to get out of debt. You want to be successful financially or occupationally. It's not going to happen without some, uh, some opposition. There's going to be resistance that's going to come. Maybe you want to have a deeper walk with the Lord. You want to go into ministry or, or you, want to, you want to get deeper with God. It's not, listen, if you really want some opposition, try that one. Because all sorts of things are going to start happening. Here's what happens. Is, is we go into, we, we say, okay, I'm going to go higher in life. I'm going to experience what my dreams, I'm going to go after them. Immediately, you show up on the enemy's radar. You bleep it. Just like that. And he starts watching you. And as you start moving towards that, he immediately comes up with a plan to come against you and present opposition to you. He sends forth that plan. That plan comes in discouragement. That plan comes against you. What his plan is for you is to discourage you enough so that you'll quit, that you'll surrender. In fact, he wants you to back up. He doesn't want your marriage to be successful. He doesn't want your finances to be successful. He doesn't want you to be successful in your occupation. And so he has a plan and he comes against you immediately just like that. With, with any with any opportunity, you're going to face many adversaries and many adversities. Now, what I'm wanting you to see is there's ground to be taken for your life to be successful, and you are in a fight. A lot of people don't believe that. And, and maybe, maybe if you're not facing oppositions, then you're stagnant in what you are. You're just going to be complacent in your life, and you're going to live right where you are. You're never going to go higher in life. But if you want to go higher in life, you're going to have to fight for it. We read this in the book of 1 Timothy again. Timothy talking to the, to the young pastor, uh, Paul talking to the young pastor Timothy. He says this in 1 Timothy 6.12. Fight the good fight of the faith. Now before we leave that thought, I want you to realize that faith means fight. Faith doesn't just mean believing in God. Faith means taking risk. Faith means you're going to fight. Fight the good fight of the faith. What kind of faith? The sincere faith. Take hold of the eternal life. The life you want. Take hold of it. To which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. What kind of life are you wanting? What kind of life are you confessing? What do you want out of life? Well, well he says here, you've got to realize it's a fight and you've got to lay hold of it. Again, the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy, if you're going to be successful, if you're going to come out of this on top, if you're going to be victorious, then you're going to have to understand you're in a fight. The enemy has marked you, the enemy has you on his radar, and he has come against you. You know, maybe your dream in life is to have a fulfilling marriage or to be successful in, in your occupation or or to be financially liberated, retire at an early age, or, or to go on deeper with God, or, or whatever. Whatever the Lord has put into your heart to experience, I want you to understand it's not going to come without being opposed. The enemy is going to oppose you. He's not going to lay out a red carpet and say, hey, come on up. Come on up. We've got a better life for you up here. That's not what the enemy is going to do. He is going to fight you every single step of the way. And if you don't know that, you're never going to make it. But with faith in the Lord, faith that is sincere, faith that causes you to fight and helps you fight, you're going to be successful. For example, maybe somebody's depressed. They, they struggle with depression and negativity. And they make up their mind one day, I am not going to be depressed anymore. I am not going to be negative anymore. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. And they make this say, I'm, I'm going to, I am going to go on with the Lord. I'm going to be happy about life. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be thrilled that I'm alive and I'm just going to rejoice in the Lord. What is the very first thing that's going to happen? They're going to get something. The enemy, they, they blip the, the enemy's radar. Here comes the, here comes the opposition. They get a negative report from the doctor. They get a phone call. Somebody wants to talk about somebody. It depresses them even more. One of the kids messes up. The spouse messes up. 
And the next thing you know is they're more depressed than they've ever been before. And they actually have lost ground rather than taken ground. You see, this is what the enemy does to every single one of us. And too often, we, 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 we have an attitude, well, you know, the preacher said that God wants me to be victorious. He wants me to have this victorious life, and, and I'm supposed to be an overcomer. Well, you know what? It's not working that way for me. I am, I am, I am, I've never had so much, since I made the decision that I was going to go on with God, since I made that commitment of my faith, I, I've never had so many things to come against me in all my life, in the whole world. It seems like everything's coming against me. Well, you've got to realize two things. You want a victorious life. But, number one, you can't have a victorious life without a victory. <laughs> right? People want a victorious life, but they don't want to fight. you got to fight. you got to have a victory. But here's the main thing that I really want you to get is a lot of people think, well, I must be out of God's will. God doesn't love me. So I must be out of God's will if I'm facing all this adversity. No. No. What that really means is you're probably dead center of the perfect will of God for your life, and that's why you're facing it. You see, it's when you understand this that you understand that you can go on. You can experience the great life that God has for you. I, I talk to people all the time, and they'll tell me, you know, but Pastor, I've been reading my Bible. I've been praying. I've given more than I've ever given. I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm ministering to people. I'm, I'm inviting people to come to church. And, and I, you just would not believe all the, all the problems I'm having in life. Well, hallelujah. Right? <laughs> See, when you understand it from the faith perspective, it puts everything in, into a different way. <laughs> you showed up on the enemy's radar. You have showed up. And now he's turning up the heat on you. It's going to get hot. His plan is to discourage you. His plan is to cause you to stop. And what his really plan is, is to cause you to back up. So that he can take the ground that you want. So here, let, me, let me explain to you. Here's how it works. Here's how it works every single time. You make up your mind. I have a door of opportunity. I'm going to go through this door. I'm going to lay hold of the life that I really want. I'm going through this door of opportunity. And so you take that step in faith. Immediately, you come up with opposition. Immediately, he comes. And, 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 it's, and it's really strong at first. Usually, that first wave of opposition just about causes you to change your mind about the whole thing. But, but, you, but if you'll stand strong and you won't back up and you'll stand right there, keep doing what you know you're supposed to do, keep praying, keep giving, keep coming to church, keep standing in your faith, keep doing what you're supposed to do, what's eventually going to happen is the enemy is going to give up on you and back off and you get to march forward and take that ground, right? Eventually he's going to do it. Now, now understand this, understand this. How long will it take, Delbert? Goodness gracious. Well, how big is the area you want? You know, the battle, the battle is determined by what you want out of life. And, and if you'll stand firm and you'll take that ground and not back up, you'll be able to march forward. What God will do, as we've already talked about in faith, is you'll have a time of peace. And things will go real well for a while, but God's not going to let you stay there and get stagnant. He's going to give you another door of opportunity. You say, okay, here we go again. So you reach through that door, you walk through it, you grab a hold of the life you want, you try to go forward in your faith. Again, here comes opposition, just, just immediately, just like that. If you'll stand strong, if you'll stay there and not back up, eventually he backs away and you get to take that ground too. This is how life works. Successful people face opposition after opposition after opposition. They don't back up, they keep going forward. This is faith that will overcome any opposition you face. This is sincere faith. This is the life that God wants us all to live and to enjoy. You are overcomers, the Bible says. You're more than a conqueror. Greater is he that lives in you than he that is in the world. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Listen, it's all there. Jesus Christ lives inside of you. You're empowered by the Spirit of God. You can do anything. You can even fight. God wants us to go on. Now, sometimes it gets so tough. How many has ever felt like there's just nothing else that can go wrong? You know, man, I've lost my job. I've, I've done, I've got face, I'm, I'm sick in my body. I, I, my finances are in a mess. It's just all going crazy, you know? And you just, you, just, you just can't do anything. You can't march forward because there's so much opposition out there. So what do you do at this particular time? Well, the one thing you don't do is back up. The one thing you don't do is back up in your faith. Don't back up in your prayer life. Don't back up in your att attendance of church. Don't back up in your ministry. Don't you back up. You stand strong. Let me show you this in the scriptures in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 13. Paul says here, Therefore put on the full armor of God. 
so that when the day of evil comes, and you're going to have one if you haven't, everybody has one. I'm not putting that on you. I'm not speaking that into existence. But here's what you do if it happens. Everybody has a day when everything that can go wrong goes wrong. And you don't know what to do. Here's what he says to do. You may be able to stand. Put on this whole armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Stand. Let's all say that together. Stand your ground. And after you have done how much? Everything. After you have done everything, stand. You know, you hear, we, we make fun of it sometimes. Well, I'm just holding on. Well, good. Good. At least hold on. Don't back up. Don't turn loose. You know, what Paul is saying here, listen, if you will hold on long enough, if you will stand your ground long enough, eventually the, the enemy is going to back away and you're going to be able to take that ground. And every single one of us knows that this is exactly what's happening. After you put on the helmet of salvation, after you put on the blessed prayer of righteousness, after you put, fit, shod your feet with the gospel of, 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 of peace, after you've, after you've taken the, the shield of faith and the, and the sword of the Spirit, after you've done everything, Hold on, stand. Don't back up. Because eventually, the enemy is going to let you through. And you're going to take the ground. And you're going to march forward into your victory. Okay. Now, make sure you, you understand the process. You make a decision. I'm going on. I'm going to a higher level of life. Ah, you make that decision. Bleep, you show up on his radar. Opposition comes immediately. If you will stand. If you'll put on your faith. If you'll stand strong in the Lord, eventually he's going to back off and you march forward. And then the process repeats again and again and again. And if you'll keep doing the process, you're going to be a very successful per people. Now, many give up on this when they face opposition because they don't understand. They don't understand how it works. Say, for example, a marital couple, marriage, uh, a couple comes in here, they're married and they're having marital problems. And they hear a message on, on marriage and how God wants you to have a fulfilling, uh, enjoyable marriage. And, and He wants your marriage to be strong. And, and, and you know, when they, at the end of the service, you know what's going to happen. You know, I ask you to do, is this what you want? And they raise their hand and they make that commitment. They say, yeah, we're going to do it. So, so they make that commitment together. They're going to have a marriage. They're going to have a good marriage, a strong marriage, a wonderful marriage. And, and they get in the car to go home or go out to eat. And what happens? Immediately. What, what happens? They can't even decide where they're going to go eat lunch at. We're going to go to his parents' house or her parents' house. Shut up, kids. You know we're fussing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on. There you are. Immediately, opposition comes. And you get in the biggest fight ever. And you go home and you say, well, Delbert didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> God doesn't want this marriage to work. No, God wants it to work. You don't. You're about to back up. See, the enemy doesn't want your marriage to be successful. He doesn't want you to have a fulfilling marriage. He wants your marriage to dissolve. You got to stand strong. You got to keep praying. You got to keep attending. You got to keep going, doing, and standing strong. And if you'll stand strong enough, you're going to have the marriage you want. But you won't if you back up. And every single one of us knows that this is exactly how it works. <laughs> when everything goes wrong that can go wrong you got to have an attitude already ready to release you got to have this inside of you and i took it from from habakkuk i referenced it earlier when we began the service today but habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17 says this although and this is in their vernacular but we can relate to it although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vines or or the labor of the olive shall fall fail and the fields shall yield no meat uh, the flocks shall be cut off from the flocks are going to be sh shut off from the from the fold and, and there shall be no herd in the stalls yet yet Though I don't have anything to eat, though I don't have a job, though, though I'm sick in my body, though everything that can go wrong has gone wrong yet, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. You see, if the enemy can get your joy, if he can stop you from rejoicing in the Lord, he's got you backing up. As long as you're rejoicing and as long as you've got your strength and joy, you're going to go forward. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. We've got to have that attitude. I'm going on with God. I'm going, I know if I fight long enough, I'm going to win. Yeah. I can't back up. <laughs> That's in your face, faith. 
People tell me all the time, Delbert, I really want God involved in my finances. You don't realize how many times I hear this. I'm going to really start giving. I'm going to give what, what I want to give. I'm going to give more than I've ever given. Tell me what immediately happens. You've been there. You've done it. Car breaks down. Washer goes out. Child gets sick. Unexpected doctor bills. You know what happens. You lose your job. You get laid off. Business goes kaplunk. No business. No money coming in. Kaplunk. I mean, this is, this is the opposition that we, every single one of us have. Why? Because you have bleeped his radar. He is sending opposition. He wants you to back up. He wants you to give up. He wants you to surrender so that he can take your ground. This is, this is, the, this is the way it works. This is how it really, really works out. You know, I pray every week about the weather. I mean, you think about it. It's amazing when a blizzard comes. You know when it comes. It comes on Saturday night. When do your pipes freeze? They freeze on Monday or Tuesday? Friday on Saturday night. When do your children get sick? Saturday night. See, we make this commitment. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to get to church. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to do it. And all of these adversities begin to happen. Again, if it were easy, anybody could do it. It just doesn't work that way. He's going to fight you every single step of the way. The Bible tells us about the the children of Israel. They had uh, come to the Jordan River. And there they camped, next door to their blessing, next door to their dream. This is the place that their parents had dreamed about, their ancestors had dreamed about, the place they had dreamed about. It was the land that was flowing with milk and honey. It was their promised land. And there they were. And God had said to them, you can have it if you'll go in and fight. Now, what did they do? They focused on the opposition rather than focusing on their faith. And they turned around and they went back into the wilderness. You know, you would think, wouldn't you, after all of all they had seen, all the plagues that had been in Egypt, all the stuff they had wa- watched God do and, and deliver them with a mighty hand, the Bible says, the Red Sea opening and they crossing and that Red Sea closing and destroying their enemies, going, a, you know, manna from heaven and water from a rock and, and protection day and night. Now, I mean, wouldn't you think they would just know they could just go right in and take it? <laughs> they didn't. They went out into the wilderness, and there they lived the rest of their life because they wouldn't fight. They focused on the giants rather than focusing on their faith. You know, some of us today, right now, you're camped right next to your land that's flowing with milk and honey, to your promised land. You're right next door to it. And God is saying the very same thing to you as he said to them. You can have it if you'll fight. I'll be with you. I'll go with you. Yeah, there's some giants in there. Yeah, there's some walled cities, but I'll tell you exactly how to handle all of them. Really, I'll tell you how many times to march around and shout. I'll tell you exactly what to do to take every single problem that you have. What are you going to do? Are you going to cross over? Are you going to let the opposition stop you? And you're going to spend the rest of your life in your wilderness. God wants you to go over. God wants you to experience abundance. Jesus says, I come so you can have an abundant life. David is a kind of a person, as we looked at his life not long ago, we did a whole series on his life. And, you know, even though David did what was right, bad things happened to him. Even though the Bible says he was a man after God's own heart, every day, every chapter of his life, it seemed like it was full of opposition. The prophet Samuel, with a word from God, comes to David, lays hands on him, anoints him with oil, says, you're going to be the king of Israel. From that moment on, the Bible didn't say David had any problems until then. But from that moment on, there were giants. Think about it. His best friend dies. He's rejected by his brothers. He's rejected by the king. He flees into the wilderness. He's lonely. His wife leaves him. He lives in caves. He nearly loses his mind. He's rejected. He's suffering all these things. You know his life? Sin. Sin. His children die. You name it, he faced it. But David was the kind of a person who had a promise from God. And he stood strong. He never backed up. He stood strong. He laid hold of the life that he wanted. 
And he marched on and he kept taking the ground, taking the ground, taking the ground. Until finally one day he lived his dream. He became the king of all of Israel. David had this kind of an attitude. And this is the kind of an attitude that God wants every single one of us to experience and to have. It's in Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? And Paul has just listed all of this stuff that he's been through. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who dare be against us? If God's for you, you can't lose. It's impossible for you to lose if God's on your side. And so what I'm wanting you to hear today, what I'm trying to communicate to you today, is the enemy is going to fight you every single step of the way. But with, with life comes opposition. And if you're going to be successful, you're going to face these oppositions. So mothers and grandmothers, train up your children and your grandchildren to understand that they can take opposition and change them into opportunities. Teach them that they got to stand. If they'll pull on that sincere faith, if they'll pull on that faith from God that that you've made sure was in there, that they won't only come through every fight, they will come out victorious. Don't let them live their lives in the wilderness. You teach them how to cross over and fight that opposition and go into that land of their dreams, that land that's flowing with milk and honey for their lives, that land of promise for their lives. Because every single one of us understand there are oppositions all through life. Every chapter, he's going to fight you every single step of the way. But if you'll hold on, you'll put on the armor of God, you do what you know is right to do, and you stay tight with God, you're going to go through it. And if God be for you, who can be against you? If if, if Jesus has whispered in your ear a dream, a, 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 a desire, you're the only one who can stop it. God saying, let's go fight. This is the faith, sincere faith, that will help you overcome any opposition, any adversity, any, anything that comes against you in life. And if you will stand on that faith, you're going to have a very successful, very victorious life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. The word of God. It's alive. It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides, Lord, our soul and our spirit. So, Father, today I pray it's divided and we're easily seeing now the things of the spirit. And, Lord, we want to be victorious. Heads bowed and your eyes closed. I just know that some of you right now are camped next to your, next to your promised land. And you know you are. And what you've tended to do is focus on the opposition and not focus on your faith. But what the Lord is saying to you today is if you'll do it, I'm with you. Yeah, we're going to have some fights, but we're going to be victorious. Yeah, we're going to cross over and we're going to be, we're going to have the life of your dreams. How many of you would say, yeah, Delbert, you know what? I might be right now at that place in my life. And I really want to do this. I really want to go forth. I want to experience the dreams that I really feel. If that's you, would you raise your hand right where you're sitting? And let me, I see hands everywhere. Lord, thank you. Okay, put those down. One more thing. Now, the rest of us, or all of us perhaps, we, we, we know this is true. But yet we have a tendency to give up. We have a tendency to give in. And we back up. And we come out of the thing worse than we went into it. See, what the Lord want, want you to see today is that that's not the way I want it. I want you to remember what I'm telling you today and that when these tough times come, when everything that can go wrong does go wrong, that you know to stand tight. Don't back up. Don't skip church. That's where you need to be. Don't stop giving. That's what you need to do. Don't stop ministering and calling people and inviting people because that's where where I am. And if if you get where I am, then we're going to be victorious. How many of you, along with me, would say, you know what, sometimes I do have a, a tendency to get afraid? Sometimes I have a tendency to back up, and I want to stop. I want to be victorious because I've had a victory. If that's you, would you raise your hand and let me pray for you as well? I see hands everywhere. Father, I do. I pray for every single hand that's went up so far, Lord, and I ask you now in Jesus' name. That, Lord, as we, as we go through life and we understand there's going to be opposition, but, Lord, first of all, we'll have the boldness to cross over and focus on our faith and not on the opposition. Father, there are many here today that are at that place in their life 
Lord, it, it's, it's a Jordan River, and Lord, I want you to show them. Lord, you're going to go with them. There's going to be giants. There's going to be walls, but they're going to be victorious. They're going to win. They're going to be victors. And then, Lord, for the others, Lord, remind us. Remind us, Lord, that we don't have to back up. If we will, if we will hold on, if we'll stand our ground long enough, the enemy backs up, and we get to march forward. So, Father, I pray today in Jesus' name that every single person is encouraged in that dimension. Head still bowed and eyes still closed. Now, some of you just aren't where you need to be with God. And you know it. Every fight you get into, you lose. Seems like the world just, just is, is crazy. You, you never have a victory. The reason is, is because you don't know Jesus. Jesus isn't in your life. You don't have him to stand on and pull on. You don't have him to help you. But what the Lord is saying to you today is if you will receive me as your Lord and your Savior, if you will receive me into your life, I'm going to open your eyes so that you can see the kingdom. You'll be born again of spirit and water and you can enter the kingdom. You're going to come forth and you're going to have a victorious life. I've got such a life planned for you. I've got so many things ahead for you. You haven't even dreamed them. You, you, you have no idea what I planned for you. If that's you. And you know you're just not where you need to be with God. Would you raise your hand right where you're sitting and allow me just to pray for you? See your hand right there. Would you keep them up till I look at me as you as you hand, hold them up and just till I see you? See your hand. Two, three, four, five. See the hand in the back back here. Any others? Any others? I haven't seen you yet. Five or six of us. Praise God. Father, all right. Well, they're serious. They understand this lesson. They understand the truth. And so, Father, by your Spirit, now I ask you to draw them into the kingdom of heaven. 